Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're speaking to Butch Vig and Steve Marker of Garbage about their production work, including Vig's work on Nirvana's Nevermind. So I know that you both have done some producing and you're both obviously musicians. Do you have perhaps one love? Like if you had to choose between the two, would you be able to? I love being in the studio. I am a studio rat. I mean, I, I love playing live, but I don't really like the traveling. And I'm sure Steve and the rest of the band would say that getting your butt dragged from point A to point B every day is, is no fun. And you're on stage for a couple hours every night. That makes up for it. But um, in my heart, I'm a... I'm a studio geek. I, I just love tinkering, you know. And you know, we never planned on being a live band when we made our first record. It just sort of happened, and that was a lot of years ago. And I have to say, uh, playing live now has just been really a lot of fun. I was sitting on the bus the other day, going, "I really like sitting on this bus." <laughs> you know, it's 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 cozy. This question is uh, for Butch. Did the success of Nirvana's Nevermind change the way that you produce records, especially for those of Garbage? I don't really know that it changed the way I produce albums. It definitely opened up doors for me. I've been doing a lot of independent records for dirt cheap budgets for many years and all of a sudden with the success of Nevermind also Smashing Pumpkins which both you know the records came out around the same time I had a lot of calls and was able and very lucky to be able to sort of pick and choose projects that I wanted to do. The time those records kind of got successful I was getting kind of burned out on doing guitar based drums and that's one of the reasons that I started doing remixes with Steve and Duke and those remixes led to forming garbage because the studio was, for us, was much more of a, a creative tool and, and recording became much more of a, an interesting process than just, you know, recording uh, rock music in sort of a traditional form. So, mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I love about garbage um, is that it's a pretty wide open palette when we go into the studio. And, uh, you know, we're already talking about making a new record and I think the new album is going to sound quite different from all previous five garbage records. I think we want to push ourselves a little bit more, so I think it's going to be interesting. So what is it that you guys love about making music and what keeps it fresh for you year after year? I just don't know how you do without it. You know, it's just always been part of my life and it's part of a language that I relate to and I wouldn't know what to do without it. Yeah, I'm the same way. I've spent my entire adult life making music, either writing songs or playing in bands or producing or engineering. I don't know what else I would do. It's, uh, I'd, probably, I'd probably be in jail or something. I, I really swear to God, I, I don't know that I have anything of any talent. Other taxi than driver. Ta well, I was a taxi driver for a while. Actually, I, I did like that job too. It was cool. Um, but it, music is, is like uh, therapy for me. I don't really even consider it a job. I mean, I don't mind putting in 12, 14, 16 hour days because it's you're immersed in this process that is, you're getting uh, immense gratification from, even when it's a tough day, you know, I'd, I'd take that. As my friend in Chicago always, always says, making music beats slopping hot tar. Not, there's any, you know, no disrespect to anybody who's slopping hot tar out there, but uh, I prefer making music. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, right for your on. time. Cool, thanks. Thank you.